Bom, bom, bom. Bom, bom. Greetings, one and all, and welcome to Tom's Hit Parade. By the way, I invite you to hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up if you like what you see, share this video with your friends, and leave me your thoughts down in the comment section. I'd really appreciate it. So, yes, today I am doing an unboxing. It's something I do not do very often. Those of you who know my channel and if you've scrolled through my past videos, I think I might have done one unboxing in my channel's uh, six-year history, almost. But uh, yes, this is a very special occasion. I am stoked as hell to get this package. Uh, it's coming all the way from France, uh, believe it or not. And yes, that's where I had to order it from. Uh, it is from Amazon France, as you can see by the little logo here. Uh, it's incurred a little damage here. Hopefully the contents are uh, okay. But And yes, you've seen the uh, title for the video, so you know what this is. But uh, yes, I have been uh, kind of consumed for the last... most of the second half of 2023 with uh, a resurgent, resurgence in interest in film scores uh, of my, uh, myself. Film scores in general, and John Williams in particular. So this thing seemed to come along just at the right time. Uh, I am just absolutely nuts about John Williams right now. And I almost did not want to do this video <clears throat> because I was considering it was going to be a spoiler for a, a theme week that I've got coming up in um, probably February. I'm aiming for February on my channel. The first theme week I've done since before the pandemic, ac pandemic actually. Uh, but then I decided, you know what? I'm just too excited to not make a video event out of this uh, unboxing. And uh, plus, uh, why don't I think of it instead of a uh, spoiler, think of it as a prelude or a teaser for my theme week. But anyway, uh, yes, enough of uh, jibber jabber. Uh, let's go ahead and get this thing opened. I am really, really stoked to get this, as I said, opened. Uh, so hopefully, yes, hopefully the damage is... Uh, Minimal or none at all. And oh, actually, the damage should be zero because it is uh, concealed in its own box inside. So, and I did not bring, uh, have scissors at the ready for myself. So, hopefully, I will get this open without scissors. Okay, let's see if we can do this. Just got to get a corner of the tape. It's not that difficult, right? Uh, but yes, um, it's going to be a theme week that I'm very excited about uh, coming up in February, and hopefully you guys will be excited about it too. Yes, um, film scores is something uh, that I just do not talk about. As you've seen on my channel, I almost never talk about it. Uh, it's just because for years I have been... Um, uh, my interest in film scores was basically nil for many years. Uh, but yes... Just, uh, as I said, just got a really, uh, became a, had renewed interest in film score. So, tape is off. Let's go ahead and pop this open. Here we go. Yes, there's the, uh, label there. So let's take a look. It is in absolutely amazing condition. Okay. This is it. Uh, the Legacy, or The Legend of John Williams, excuse me. This is a 20-CD box set spanning his entire career. Uh, it was released in France. Uh, I will put up a uh, scanned image of this um, uh, over overlay as I describe the ing ingredients, the contents. I don't know why. I'm, I'm Apparently, I think this is a recipe. I don't know, but anyway, um, the contents of this box. Uh, yes, it has... Um, Several not complete scores of his, but the complete uh, original soundtrack album releases on these various discs, uh, probably five or six of those, and excerpts from dozens more of his soundtracks, whether it's just one track or three or four tracks or whatever, as well as some Boston Pops uh, highlights from his Boston Pops days. But yes, um, discs one and two have Boston Pops highlights, including the uh, Star Wars uh Highlights from the Star Wars scores. Disc 3 has early scores of his. Uh, 
and I, I will describe the contents in detail later on. Uh, disc four is his work with director Mark Rydell. He did three different Mark Rydell films through his career. Disc five is the D disaster movie trilogy that is the Poseidon Adventure, Earthquake, and The Towering Inferno. He did those three Irwin Allen movies. Uh, disc six is uh, movies with Clint Eastwood and Robert Altman. Uh, disc seven is westerns. He did several westerns over his career. Disc eight is devoted devoted to the soundtracks from Jaws and Jaws two. Disc nine is the first of four discs of his work with Steven Spielberg. Uh, you you probably know he is he has worked with Steven Spielberg for fifty years, almost fifty years, and uh, was it twenty nine films? I think I counted as he's done with Spielberg. Uh, disc 9 has E.T. and the soundtrack from Always. Disc 10 has Jurassic Park. Disc 11, Schindler's List. And Disc 12, uh, music from the Indiana Jones films. Uh, disc 3, uh, excuse me, Disc 13 has his score uh, compositions from the Oliver Stone American Triptych, which is he did the scores from. JFK, Born on the Fourth of July, and Nixon were three, uh, the uh, three Oliver Stone movies he's done. Disc 14 is his work with, with Ron Howard, which is essentially just far and away. I think it's the only Ron Howard movie he did. Uh, disc 15, his work with Sidney Pollock and Martin Ritt, two other directors he's worked with. Disc 16, John Badham and Brian De, Palman, uh, Brian De Palma. Uh, disc 17 has a miscellaneous assortment of single film collaborations that he's done with, you know, uh, just one movie with each uh, director that he's done. And disc 18 features uh, Anna-Sophie Mutter, a violinist that he has worked with. He did a couple of concert albums, or, or did one concert album and one album of uh, studio recordings of, um, you know, rearrangements of mostly his film, uh, pieces from his films, uh, to highlight Anna-Sophie Mutter's extremely talented violin work. Disc 19 features some concert works that he's done, whether they're, uh, I'm not sure if he has any of the Olympic themes on here or not, but yeah, different, uh, you know, concertos that he's done. He's done a lot of classical and stuff work like that. And disc 20, which is probably the most interesting disc that I'm looking forward to sampling, is Songs, Covers, and New Readings, which is basically songs that he uh, conducted or arranged that other artists performed. I believe Ella Fitzgerald is on here. Uh, Barbara Streisand, and several others. Uh, but yes, this is just amazing. Uh, you can tell that I'm just... Uh, this is I consider this like the crown jewel of my collection. Oh, I should try and make sure to keep the hype stickers intact. Because I think I might want to uh, take them off the cellophane and maybe attach them somewhere in here. But Yes, here we go. And as you can see, it's got the 20 discs uh, in, in pockets here on the uh, on each page. So yes, you've got the... Oh, this isn't quite uh, positioned right, sorry. So yes, the uh, Boston Pops uh, highlighting... Uh, highlighted by his Star Wars work. And we've got contents of disc 2 and 3. Or no, 3 and 4. 5 and 6. There's old Clint. Disc 7 and 8, there's uh, Jaws, or uh, Disc 8, yeah, Jaws and Jaws 2. Disc 7 has his Westerns. And Disc 9 and 10 begin his Spielberg stuff. Hopefully you guys can read some of this. Uh, I don't want to make this video too long by going through all of this uh, blah, blah, blah. But uh, yes, some more Spielberg work here. And uh, yes, the Oliver Stone stuff, and then the Ron Howard stuff. So yes, this has a bunch of stuff. I actually probably have a little over half of what's in here already, but this just the collectability of this was just put it off the scale for me. And uh, uh, John Badham and Brian De Palma, Sidney Pollock and Martin Ritt. And we have... Uh, other stuff. Uh, this is a still from Seven Years in Tibet. Tibet. Seven Years in Tibet, which is which was a very good movie, excellent movie. Then we have discs nineteen and twenty. There he is with Anna Sophie Mutter, and uh, there you go. I'll zoom in on the uh, 
songs and the Anasofi Mutter stuff. So you can take a look at that. You want to freeze frame and look at it. And this is a list of the uh, various directors he has worked with over the years. And oh, then I knew there was a book in here. I just assumed it was bound into the uh, binding of the outer uh, case, but it is actually its own separate book. And there we go. This is a very nice, looks, feels like a very nice quality book. And uh, yes, again, it's got the uh, track listings shown through here. And it's got interviews with John Williams and essays and stuff in both English and French. Everything is in both English and French. And yeah, well, I'll not do that. Anyway, I don't want to be, you know, clumsy and just kind of page through this to bore you. Uh, interviews with Jean-Jacques Anou. I guess he is a, he's a director, I assume. Uh, Oliver Stone. And Alan Bergman, uh, who is a, a lyricist that he's worked with. Uh, oh, here's, here's some good... Uh, uh, he did do a movie with um, uh, Alfred Hitchcock. Uh, he scored Alfred Hitchcock's, Hitch, Hitchcock's last movie, and that was the only movie of Hitchcock's that he scored. And then John Wayne was in a movie or two that he was in, and there's a still from Schindler's List. Just, this is a very, very quality film. And it's an interview with uh, John Williams himself. And oh, there you go. There's some more nice pictures. And there he is with uh, Steven Spielberg, and I'm not sure who this guy is. Actually, there's captions here that probably tell me. Oh, John Williams, Steven Spielberg, and Toots Thielemans. I think that's how you pronounce it. He's a uh, harmonica player. That was uh, for John Williams' first movie, Schind uh, not Schindler's List, uh, The Sugarland Express, his first Spielberg movie, not his first movie. But, uh, yeah. So, yeah. This is just amazing. I am... <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm repeating myself, but I'm just absolutely jazzed as heck to have this. And yes, the I was so impressed by the breadth of stuff on these, uh, these discs, all in one collection, and that it was released in France. I'm not sure if... Uh, I don't know that he necessarily has a huge following in France, uh, or if it was just because of... Um, if the licensing, um, you know, licensing costs, or the uh, what do you call it? The um, I had this phrase in my head a while ago, but the the, the rights uh, rights holdings are just were just more friendly, more conducive to make the set in France, or what the deal was. But uh, yes, I had to go through Amazon France to get this, and uh, postage paid. It was about one hundred and fifteen dollars. For 20 CDs, I think that's a pretty darn good price. So, uh, and yes, even though I said, as I said, I've got a little over half of what's in here, I, I could not pass up the collectability of this, and especially at this time, as my John Williams uh, fan fandom has resurged uh, significantly over the last uh, several months. But, uh, yeah, I am just... Uh, I am a broken record. I, I'm stoked as heck to have this. Uh, this is an absolutely well, I mean, very much sought after addition to my collection. So yes, I will, uh, yeah, I, I might have to, you will be seeing this again. Let me just say that in uh, a video, hopefully in February. But uh, yes, to avoid just uh, this video going on and on with me not being very coherent because it's nighttime and I'm kind of tired, but I I wanted to do this video to show you, to do this unboxing, uh, not just for you guys to see, but for my own posterity. Anyway, that'll do it for this video. Be sure to like it if you liked it. And before you go, drop me some feedback in the comment section. I'd love to know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell icon to catch my new videos, and click my username to browse my old videos. Links to my socials and my favorite fellow YouTubers are in the description below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.